thank you all for joining Dallas Area Habitat for our Financial Literacy Week. We appreciate you all joining us so much. You could be doing so many things with your time, but you have taken the time to come and learn with us. Um, we feel that it's very important when you go into the home buying process that you get little nuggets and little tidbits that, that are going to help you along the way. So we've taken the time to put some classes together and we hope that you all will enjoy uh, the information that is being shared. You will find it valuable uh, and it will help you uh, along your home ownership journey. Again, we would like to congratulate you all for taking this first step, educating yourself about the home buying process. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start on our first subject, which is something that everyone wants to know about, right? Are you ready to buy a home? This is the most important question that you can ask yourself in this time period. Are you really ready to buy a home? So let's just jump in, okay? Right, are you ready to buy a home? This is just us having a conversation about the things that you need to know in order to see if you are actually ready to buy a home. So our agenda is owning a home right for you. We're gonna talk about some advantages and limitations of home ownership, responsibilities of home ownership, the cost of buying a home, and also understanding affordability. So is it right for you? Before considering home ownership, let's ask ourselves, where do I see myself within the next five years? Now, you wanna ask yourself this because in order for you, the five-year rule is just a good rule of thumb when deciding how soon to sell your home. And this has to do with the amount of equity uh, the average homeowner has built in their home after five years of possession. And it also takes into account the costs associated with selling the home and purchasing a new one. Do I have enough savings and an emergency funds? This is critical when it comes down to owning a home. Your savings, you wanna be sure to have money saved for closing costs and down payment assistance and other fees that's associated with the cost of buying a home. And it's also very critical to have an emergency fund. Why should I have an emergency fund? This fund should definitely be separate from your savings. And it's typically three to six months of living expenses. And again, this is just in case show enough happens. You know, life happens to everyone. So when you move into that new home, you want to make sure that you have an emergency fund just in case, all right? How's my credit? You wanna know what your credit score is. Is it looking good? What's your credit score? At minimum, your credit score needs to be 620 or above. Why 620, Miss Aretha? 620, this is just because Morgan, most mortgage loans require that you have a credit score of 620 or higher. Not all, but most, okay? And you wanna put yourself in a good position to qualify for different types of, of mortgage loans, right? How much other debt do I already owe? You wanna make sure that you're not going into a, a mortgage loan having a whole lot of debt. This is going to be uh, one of the biggest purchases, purchases that you make and it's gonna be exciting. And you don't wanna go into that, you know, thinking about, oh my gosh, am I gonna be able to make this payment? So the less debt you have going in, the better. Am I ready to, or do I want to maintain a property? These are questions that you really need to ask yourself. Owning a home that sits on maybe some land or that sits on some, uh, uh, you know, a nice size yard or something, somebody has to maintain that. Okay, somebody has to cut the grass. Somebody has to keep, the, you know, the, to have somebody come out and spray the lawn to keep weeds and things from growing. Somebody has to water it, water the grass. These are things that you have to think about. Am I ready to maintain a property? So the advantages of home ownership. The advantages of home ownership, equity and wealth building. Owning a home provides you with a valuable asset and financial stability. By purchasing a home, you'll have an asset that appreciates in value over time. And now this depends on how long you plan to live there. 
and also the current market conditions. But this makes your home one of the best investments you can make and a way to establish a financial foundation for future generations. Long-term stability. You can settle in, settle on a place to live and not worry about moving every year and create long-term relationships with people in the community. Stable housing costs. Stable housing costs. While rent, rent typically rises every year, right? And then when it rises, what do we do? We move. We try to find something that's more affordable. But when you purchase a home, typically on most loans, principal and interest, this remains unchanged throughout the life of a loan, okay? And then you have an increased sense of community. Just being in a neighborhood, being a part of a, of, of a community. When you move into a neighborhood, you become a part of it. You get to know, you know, your local grocer. You get to know, you know, the teachers in the community. They're working with your family, with your students, your, your children at home, and they're making sure that they're getting the best education and you all are working together to obtain that, that one goal of making sure that your children are educated. Again, it's an increased sense of community, everyone helping each other out. And it's freedom. It's freedom to do what you want to do in your home. It's being free to customize that home the way you would like to customize that home. And no one telling you that you can't paint a certain, paint your house a certain color. You can't add something to it that you would like to add to it. Again, these are all the advantages of home ownership. Now, with advantages of home ownership, there also comes limitations of home ownership. It's decreased mobility. You're not able to just pack up and leave. When you have conflict, maybe with your neighbor, you, you can't just pack up the next day and say, well, I'm moving, okay? It's also large upfront financial investment. You have to have the money up front for a lot of, uh, to be able to get into a home. There's maintenance and repair costs. And this can be expensive and it can be ongoing maintenance. And we'll talk about that a little later. Um, limitations of home ownership. It might offer less amenities. You might be one of those who like to go to the gym every day and you have that in an apartment, but you're not gonna have that in a home or it may be something that, you know, when you're moving into a home, you got to think about needs versus wants. And you might want a gym, but you can't, you know, you got to look at that price. You might not be able to have that, afford that home gym right now. You might be one of those in the summertime, you love hanging out by the pool. You got to think about that, okay? Because when you buy a house, having a pool is expensive, one, but it's also maintenance. So, Think about these things. If that's something, if that's a, a deal breaker for you, home ownership might not be right for you right now. And then you also have to be aware of the housing market. You know, housing market fluctuates and that can make buying challenging. So when interest rates are high, you know, that can make it challenging because that affects your, the affordability piece, okay? But when rates are low, it can also be challenging because when rates are low, everybody jumps in. Everybody wants to buy a house at that point. And then now you're competing with a lot of people for maybe the same house. So you have to know the market. That's very important. So you have not been researching the market. Make sure that you do that. Responsibilities of home ownership. You are responsible for planning and paying for unexpected repairs. And whether you buy a brand new home or whether you buy a house, a fixer upper, there are going to be some repairs that are going to be needed, okay? You have to think about ongoing and preventative maintenance. You also have to think about that mortgage payment, which is going to include property taxes and homeowner's insurance. And you have to set your money aside. You have to save, okay? Because property tax, even though your principal payment may stay the same, but property taxes, that can go up. And that in turn affects your mortgage payment. The same thing with homeowner's insurance. If the person that you, the uh, company that you're going through decides to increase your homeowner's insurance, then that's going to affect your monthly payment. So you have to set money aside for those things. Then you have, you may have homeowners association dues. If you're in a homeowners association, that's not for everyone. Okay. But if you're in a homeowners association, you're going to have those dues. 
that can affect your mortgage payment as well. Another thing that can affect your mortgage payment is private mortgage insurance. This protects the lender. It does not protect you. Private mortgage insurance is something that they add when you put a smaller down payment down, okay? Again, it does not protect you. It protects the lender. And then you have to think about utilities. You know, when going from a, an apartment to a home, the utilities, they, they're going to be a little higher, okay? So you, these are things that you have to think about, and this is your responsibility. You don't have a landlord anymore. You are the landlord when it comes to owning a home. The cost of buying a home, you have the upfront costs. You have the down payment. Yes, and I know everybody's talking about well, there are programs that I can apply for. Yes, you can apply for those. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get that money. So you have to save two for the down payment piece. Then you have the closing costs. These are fees that are associated with the cost of a home. You have the home inspection. Um, sometimes, depending on who you go through, home inspection might be mandatory, but typically it's not. But as a, as a counselor putting on my counselor hat, I'm going to tell you every time to get a home inspection. Why? Because it protects you, the buyer, okay? You want to know what's going on with that home. You don't want to get in there and then six months later, everything is falling apart. And then you're coming out of your, your pocket tens of thousands of dollars. So you want to get a, a certified home inspector to come and inspect that home before you close on that property, okay? You also have reserves. Reserves refers to the amount of money the buyer would need to have in their bank account after paying all closing costs and down payment. Some mortgages require that you have two months of reserves, which basically translates into two months of mortgage payments. Okay, so just some things to think about. Then you have the moving costs. So going from an apartment to a house, now you got to think about, you know, hiring movers or, you know, at least getting family members or somebody, but it still is going to be some cost somewhere that you're going to have to pay out of your pocket for these moving expenses, okay? Then you have utility deposits. Even though, like I say, you you paid deposits maybe, it, you know, being renting, now it comes into moving into a home. And because you're a first-time homeowner, they may ask you for a deposit. Not all the time, but they may. And then some of the ongoing costs is just the mortgage payment itself. P-I-T-I, P-I stands for principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Again, mortgage insurance. This is not going to be on everyone's loan. This is, you know, on certain loans. Then you have utilities. Utilities are going to be higher than what you were paying when you were in, a, in an apartment. So you have to account for that. This is one of those where you're telling the kids when you move in, uh, you're not in that bedroom. Okay, let's turn those lights off. Okay, uh, you're away from the house. Let's turn this AC down a little bit. Any, anything you can do to kind of conserve on that electricity bill. And then you have the maintenance and repairs. Again, this is ongoing. Some of the biggest repairs uh, that I can think of right now, like that heating and AC, um, if, if that goes out. You know, Texas has a brutal, brutal summer. So if that AC goes out, that can, you know, you got to have somebody come out there. If you don't know how to fix it, you got to have somebody come out there and repair it. So these are things you have to think about. Plumbing, those things can be expensive as well. And then you also have homeowners association dues. Again, that's only if you are in a homeowner association that you will have homeowners association dues. Understanding what you can afford. Housing, your housing payment, it should not exceed no more than 28 to 30% of your gross income, okay? That's just the rule of thumb. Uh, they don't want your housing payment to exceed no more than 28 to 30% of your uh, gross income. And then your housing payment plus your monthly debt should not exceed 38 to 40% of your income, okay? And if it does, these are the things that are going to cause you to be denied. So if you know you have a lot of debt, the first thing you need to do is start paying it down, paying it down. Because again, you want this to be a place of peace, a place that you can enjoy coming to every day and not going to it and saying, oh, this house is so, it's such a burden. Okay, this should be your, your sanctuary. So do what you need to do before you actually get into that new home. And you have to know your budget. 
If you are not budgeting, you need to start doing that because this is very important when it comes down to home ownership. You need to be able to trim expenses. When you see, when you look at your budget and you see that you're spending a lot of money on certain things, you're going to have to know to, to trim down or cut back where you need to cut back. And you have to ask yourself, am I living check to check right now? If you are, now may not be a, the right time to try to purchase a home. You want to get your finances in order before you start thinking about trying to purchase a house. Do you have enough saved for a down payment, closing costs, and other upfront expenses? It can be costly to get into that new home, but you have to get in the mindset and the habit of saving. If you don't learn anything else from me today, save, save, save. That's the magic word right there. Save. You have to be saving. You have to consist consistently save because things are going to come up and you have to uh, think about the what ifs. I know we all we don't like living in, you know, that negative attitude or having, you know, what if this happened? What if that happened? But when you are a person at home, you want to you have to think about those things. What if what if something happens? OK, save, save your money. OK. And also, again, stressing, what's the housing market like? Do your research. If you have friends that are realtors or you know somebody that's a realtor, ask them, reach out to them. They can tell you, okay? But you have to do your homework. Uh, the four C's of credit, okay? These are things that the, the your mortgage lender, this is what they're gonna be looking at, okay? They're gonna be looking at capital. Capital is the amount of money you have readily available, whether that's in your savings, uh, whether that's in some property that you may have or other assets that you own. It could sell fairly quickly for cash. Capital, okay? Next, they're wanna, wanna, gonna wanna know capacity. Do you have the ability to pay back this loan, okay? And when your debts are low, that, that looks good, okay? There's, that helps with your capacity. Then they're looking at your credit history. Um, they're looking at your record of paying bills and other debts on time, okay? When they pull your credit report, they're gonna look and see, did John Doe or Jane Doe pay their bills on time? Okay, because if they look at your credit report and they see that you didn't take care of the little stuff, the first thing they're thinking is, why should we lend for a major purchase like a house, if they're not willing to take care of, uh, you know, a small medical bill that's $100 or a credit card that's that's $300. You know, you have to put yourself in the mind of these, these bankers and these lenders, okay? Um, and then you have to, they're gonna look at the collateral. This is assets that would act as security for a loan. So in the case of a mortgage, the house that you're purchasing will be the collateral. So in summary, home ownership is an opportunity to build wealth and assets, not just for you, but for future generations, for your kiddos, you know, just to pass down to family. We all want to have some kind of something that we can pass down to our family. That's, that's important. Uh, so, so think about that. And it also provides a sense of pride and ownership when you all purchase your first home and you drive up into your driveway and you see, you know, the fruits of your labor, just all the hard work that you put into it, that's that's a feeling, you know, that's that's an, an, an immense feeling that you that no one can take away from you. You put in the hard work. You did this, and home ownership requires you to put down roots, you know. You're not bouncing from place to place. You're stable. You're in this, you grow, your children grew up in this one community. You know, and they went to school in this one neighborhood. These are roots that you're putting down for your family. And also home ownership, it may require a lifestyle or a budget adjustment. You know, you may, and women, we love to pamper ourselves. We love to go to the spa. We love to go get our nails done, our hair done. And guys, you know, you love to take care of that nice vehicle that you have and, you know, make sure you're taking it and getting it, you know, 
maintenance and washing it up and you know all those things but some when you're thinking about buying a house that money that you're putting toward that that kind of stuff you can save and, and put it into your home you know because once you get that house it, it's, it's over after that because you want to make that house your own and that's decorating it and and doing everything to make sure you and your family are comfortable in this new house so you, it may require a lifestyle budget to get what you actually need or want in this home. And also home ownership, it's, it's, it isn't the best option for everyone. And guess what? That's okay. You have to ask yourself, what is my why? Why do I want to purchase a home? Is it because of what everyone says, that's what I should be doing with my money? It's not something that you truly want, or if you're okay with living in an apartment or a condo or a townhome, that's okay. Do what's best for you and your family. So, but most importantly, what home ownership is, it is a big responsibility. Okay. So it's nothing to go in lightly. You have to sit down, you have to have the right conversations with your family because everybody has to be on board, especially with the savings piece. OK, because it may be some things that, like I said, you have to put off for a little while until you actually get into that home. So I, I encourage you, like I said, if you have a family or if it's just you, you know, you might want if it's just you, you might want to speak with the counselor. You want you might want to have a conversation with a counselor and see if this is the best option option for you. But if it's you and members of your family, you want to sit everybody down and have a conversation and say, hey, this is the plan. This is what we want to do. And this is going to, uh, everybody's going to have to chip in. Everybody's going to have to maybe cut corners somewhere, okay? Um, but again, it's the biggest investment that you will ever make, but it's also one of the most rewarding, okay? If you decide to do this, it is very rewarding for you. And we are here at Dallas Habitat. If you have any questions um, along your home ownership journey, uh, just feel free to pick up the phone and call us or, you know, email us. Those of you that are working with a counselor, pick up the phone and call your counselor. Now is the time before you actually purchase that house to have all the right conversations. All right. So with that being said, this is just the first little tidbit right here. Are you ready to buy a home? OK, so just just think about it. Thank you all for joining us today. And again, like I said, we have other classes coming up. So we're hoping that you join us and learn all the little nuggets and the tidbits to becoming a first time home buyer. Thank you so much for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.